Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to introduce a good friend of mine from my very first vlog on the Unintentional Cougar. It's my good friend, Hugo Arimo. Hugo is just an impressive person. He is an assistant instructor at Davis Martial Arts Academy. He is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He is a world champion in that arena and he is also a professional athlete at Inspire Sports League where he competes in bodybuilding leagues and wins many competitions there. He is a senior director at ID Life, a supplement company, and he is a fitness model and a Navy veteran. He has thousands of followers on social media. He goes by the Black Spider-Man. One of the things I so appreciate about Hugo is with all the success that he's had, he's also been very real about his struggles. All right, I'm doing a little mic test. We're seeing how the sound goes for this. We're about to do our inaugural interview. Yes, we're about to get this down. That's happening. Check it out real quick. I was uh, a troubled, uh, what you call troubled youth. You know, I used to get into a lot of trouble. I used to get into a lot of fights. Um, yeah, I was, I was a bad kid. As a freshman in high school, I was only about, what, 4'9", uh, 92 pounds as a freshman in high school. And so a lot of kids would, you know, torment me and pick on me and stuff because, um, you know, I was small. I learned you have to stand up for yourself. So I didn't care. Even if you were going to beat me up or, you know, pick on me or whatever, I was going to stand up for myself. And that's that's what I always did. When I was in high school, people, a lot of people looking looking at me right now, they don't, they don't know this, but, you know, I was last in my class. There was 163 students. The military helped me a lot. You know, like I got focused. Looking back on it, it was the best thing that I could have ever done. Prior to the military, I was always late, lazy, um, kind of disrespectful. Um, I learned that consequences have, um, actions have consequences. I started becoming better at being on time. I started being uh, truer to what I say. You know, like if I tell you I'm going to do something that you can take it to the bank. Well, I learned uh, putting aside my ego and being more of a um, team player. So it was, it was a blessing. It was the best thing at the time that I could have done. You know, when I got out, I didn't really know what I was going to do. Coming back home to civilian civilian life was, it, it was hard. There was an incident that occurred, like I, I've told you before, um, where I was at a bar and I got approached by a confront, and there was a, conf a confrontation. I was about to become jumped by three guys and I remember feeling, having that helpless feeling, you know, and um, that's when I knew I had to do something. A friend of mine recommended kickboxing. So, skip ahead, I found this kickboxing school in Humble, Texas called Solis Martial Arts Academy. And that's where it all began. But the school was known for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is a form of uh, submission wrestling. So I got talked into staying for the next class, which was the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class, and I had surgery on my left knee. And so I didn't want to take the chance of doing this, uh, trying it out or whatever, because it, it looked dangerous. It looked, you know, like you really get hurt. I got talked into it, so I decided to try the class and. So I got paired up with this guy, um, this young kid at the time. Um, he was a, uh, a purple belt. He was 125 pounds. I'm a, at the time, I was 184. Mm -hmm. I used to be able to bench press 345 pounds. Like, I was a pretty strong, you know, skinny. Considerably to, bigger than this. Yeah, considerably bigger than this guy at the time. And he was 125 pounds, 5'6". And were you thinking this is going to be easy? Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, I was going to pick him up and throw him around, whatever. And I was like, man, I'm going to hurt this kid. We started going at it, and I threw everything I had at this guy. And um, his name was Robert Solis, and he's, he's, he's bad. He's badass. He's, uh, 
he's an awesome, awesome jiu-jitsu practitioner. You know? So we're, we're going at it. I'm trying to submit him and everything like that. And boom, I, threw, I picked him up. I threw him. He comes back, pins me down. And I pick him up, I explode, try to explode out, throw him again, and he comes back, pins me down. And I'm thinking this is going on like 10 minutes because I'm starting getting tired. It's only been a minute. After about a minute, I didn't even know. I thought it was 10 minutes of us going. I was so exhausted. Like he finally pinned me down, got on top of me, mounted me, this 125 pound person. And then he does what they call a cross choke and chokes me out unconscious. Like he t he's telling me, as he's choking me, he's looking at me, he's telling me, you know, if you want me to let go, just tap. But, you know, I was hard-headed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, there's no way. So I'm watching it, I'm watching it. He's choking me, he's choking me, and I'm, I'm out. I wake up, they're holding, he's holding my feet up in the air, and I'm just like, like, what just happened? So I was like, I was hooked. I was like, there's no way I can let this 125-pound guy you know, submit me and stuff, do this to me. So mm -hmm. that's when I started with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, Jiu-Jitsu saved my life. Um, like, coming out of the military, I was extremely in a, I was in a very dark place, you know, like um, like I've told you before, like I suffer from depression. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of um, veterans and even active duty personnel, you know, they suffer from depression.